What's up, my people? <laughs> How on a day waiting they happen waiting this up? You see, guys, growing up as a Christian, there are two things I learned from my Christian dad. A very good man, by the way, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Number one, respect is earned through good conduct and fine behavior. It cannot be forced. Then number two, everyone has their calling. Whether they are a pastor, a man of God, or not. I'm sure some of you fellow Christians have seen these videos on social media, the videos that show our top men of God fighting on social media. Serious fight. And Dr. Abel Damina is in the middle of this. So they are using their Bible to be making money. You know what I'm talking about. And then they now say, don't mind Damina. Damina is full of bitterness. Damina is envy. When I see him preaching, I say, this man has gone into bitterness. He has gone into heavy envy. Many of you don't know. That man was at the top. But he sees small boys rise up. So the thing, he can't stand it. That's the biggest problem he has. God, this scripture is for him. Jealous and envy. He's so jealous of... The, check all the money he's attacking at the men who are at the top. Everybody rising is not a problem to him. It was me envious of what? The template you people are using for your materialistic gospel, some of the template, I'm the one that gave to you people. What is there to envy? Envy lying to people in the name of the Bible and collecting their money, lying to them that if they don't pay tithe, they will not go to heaven, lying to them that the size of your giving determines the weight of your greatness, lying to them that you must pay tithe 50 years in advance, lying to them that if you give to the poor, you will be like the poor. Is that what I'm envying? Or envying, arranging miracles, crutches and wheelchairs, all brand new, which we don't see anymore. Is that what I'm envious of? There's nothing there to envy. I am satisfied with Jesus. I'm not ashamed. I'm talking about people like E, Adibwe, um, Enenche, Ibiome, and others. You know, I had last Sunday, somebody laughed at me in his church and called me a thief. And called me a rat, claiming to give birth to an elephant. <laughs> no, my damn thief. Love does not envy. Love is not jealous. He said, somebody, wave big past you. Now you're picking. <laughs> okay. I was told that one of them said that I have turned Christianity to a joke. That I said you can be sinning while listening to my sermons. People have turned Christianity to a joke. There's a preacher who said, don't worry yourself. Once you're born again, Continue with your sin, but just keep on listening to Sam. The devil is a liar. No, sir. I never said that. You are quoting me out of context, and I know you are too intelligent to act in that manner. You know, one man said, a pastor many years ago, he was a minister before we started. He says his assignment is to correct Papo Yedevo. That's his own call. His Part of his assignment is to correct him. The person he is called to correct is change is impacting the globe. The corrector, if I call his name, you won't know him. It's nowhere to be found. This thing has been out there for a while. It became obvious after the interview with the honest bunch. What's the issue you have? Because a lot of people say you have issues with pastor in nature. I mean, is there any problem? Is there I don't have any issues with him. Mm. I was teaching years ago in a minister's conference. Yes. And I was teaching the pastors and I told them an illustration. I used Enenche's illustration. Mm. How that used to be under me, walking in my branch church in Jaws. Yes. Under Reverend Joshua Talena. Oh, he's your boy? Yes. Under Reverend Joshua Talena, <laughs> actually. Wow. Joshua Talena is my boy. He grew up under me with Paul Odola and all of them. It became really big and a lot of more people got to know even though some of these pastors um address this during their sermon you know it is now a competition even in the pentecostal world where this pastor is fighting the other pastor anyways i'm gonna try to break this down the best way that i can you know i went to all the videos a lot of people even though they are aware don't even know what caused it i wouldn't say i totally understand but I know this got to do with it. 
cried among these men and secondly say it says we have turned christianity into a joke people have turned christianity to a joke <laughs> that's a laugh we turned christianity into a joke some of you said if you don't pay tight you will not make heaven you didn't turn christianity to a mockery and a joke anyone who is not paying his tight is not going to heaven full stop when you reduce the entire work of christ to mammon that a man can pay tight and he has entered heaven you are not turning christianity to more than a joke you said job didn't pay tight that's why he suffered for nine months don't find anywhere we are job tight no he was overly committed to giving liberally to the poor and god is committed to blessing him but there was no security Woo! hallelujah and we didn't find where he paid tight that's why he was free from suffering and that is not a joke casting as passion on the finished work of christ and some of you accuse us of giving people a license to sin but in your own denomination some of you i'm aware that some of your pastors teamed up and poisoned the geo of that church even while they were sitting under your hot holiness teachings they were able to gang up and give you poison and you say we are teaching people to sin and until you subscribe to christ you will keep traveling to heaven and never arrive we are traveling together to heaven Heaven is not a journey. Heaven is the believer's reality in Christ now. You see, when it comes to situations like this, you really, really need to tread, care tread carefully, especially, you know, as a Christian. And also, be honest. If you ask me, am I proud to be a Christian right now? I'm not really proud you know to to be a christian right now seeing all of these um you know pastors fighting themselves these so-called men of god that were meant to serve as an example to others you know fighting one another it starts with um abel damina's stance you know about church tithe right and abel damina himself have called out top men of god that i would say above, above him people like uh pastor e adeboe and you know e adeboe had mentored some of these other pastors in fact inspire um most of them like uh dr nng e adeboe came to tuko and that meeting was a drastic turning point so maybe this is what caused the issue because it started with something like that now that is being said to the people of the world Life to the world to arm the world with what to use against the church now don't forget the reason why damina is dragging all these people is not just about tithe yes major part of it is about tithe but it's also their message and doctrines he claimed are unbiblical all of a sudden assignment is to correct everybody everybody needs correction everybody is wrong the only person that is not wrong is them every preaching is wrong every book is wrong anything is wrong the outcome of it is they begin to degenerate and sink deeper and deeper and deeper and they are not aware they are not aware they have some little good gullible followers who are clapping for them <laughs> majorly online no physical person physical church is empty this is controversial stance you know concerning the the church tithe as um brought in more enemies which is expected but again would i say that these people because i also watch their videos pastor and chase videos too would i say that these people don't even preach against stealing god's money in church there was a video actually that i watched you know um where dr nnj too condemned using god's money for nonsense stuff where there was zero financial discipline no difference between church money or god's money where pastor's wife can go straight from the with offering money in the market to buy things 
since this ministry started the checkbook of this church has never been in my possession once can never be I never believed that church money belonged to the pastor any pastor here who is eating the church money or taking the tithes you need to repent it's about supremacy here so a Beldamina said that he was the one who ordained NNG which NNG the bunk now because I really want to know why okay what is NNG saying NNG said that before he met Damina <laughs> he was already casting out devils before let me say something again in that 1986 87 we had already we are already casting out devils i mean we are talking about 1980 something 1986 1987 and damina said that he ordained him in 1996 stroke 1995 1997 or thereabouts he ordained nng pastor david biome who is a friend of uh dr NNG. He actually, you know, made fun of Dr. Damina for saying that. And he said, even though you mentor, you mentor the guy or you ordain him, you are not ashamed to say that somebody that is bigger than you now. Mm, a personal opinion here. I don't think that is necessary. You can mentor somebody and the person will be bigger than you. It's a normal thing. So I think it be your mess. I take here is not with due respect you know i wasn't expecting that but it should have passed that in a different way you know you know i had last sunday somebody laughed at me in his church and called me a thief and called me a rat claiming to give birth to an elephant <laughs> no my damn thief love does not envy love is not jealous look at your bible look at it it's not jealous and envious Hmm? He said, somebody, wave dick past you. Now you're picking. <laughs> okay. John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus. Is it because of Jesus? Okay, you're then the man, but the man don't pick past you. <laughs> it's just jealousy. Just what? And some of you listen to such persons. Please, if you see that thing, pass it. In one small corner where you are. You are not afraid. These are men with results. They are men with what? Results. Okay, we are all results. <laughs> they brag about houses. They brag about ministerial success to be congregation size, to be cars, estates, money. And they say because they have all of that, me, I don't have that. I'm a failure and they're a success. So their definition of ministerial success is based on material acquisition. And they forget that Jesus said, beware of covetousness. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. I feel like I'm teaching now. A man is not defined by car and house and money and clothes. You know, the disciples of Jesus, who we are copying in ministry today, did not brag about cars, did not brag about jets, did not brag about houses, did not even brag about the sizes of their congregation. The only thing they brag about was Christ. Christ is our treasure. That is what we have. And if a man of God, who is supposed to be happy that he has Jesus, is not satisfied with Jesus, is the finding himself by car and house and money and all of that he is too carnal for anybody to model him i think everybody i'm talking about these pastors are uh, handling this you know carelessly it came for my friend probably an opportunity for me to also call him out on that you know i always say something being a man of god you also have to be careful of what you say now that the freeze is involved in all of this you're expecting that right yes so they shared um a document on social media which i'm going to talk about later in the in the video but daddy freeze um supported abel damina's story using that document you know as a proof that damina ordained nng i just saw this document um apparently from the punch if i'm correct that shows abel damina as um 
one of the uh should i say signatories to the cac account of a very popular church where the pastor is shading him right now saying his follower dropped from 1000 to 250. let me tell you the truth john chapter 6 i'm a biblical scholar i studied scripture in original languages the day christ preached the truth he lost all his disciples down to only 12 from about 72. Go and read uh, John chapter 6. The moment you start to speak the truth, you will lose your friends. I am an example of how many friends I lost. I lost business associates. I lost friends. I was with a friend of mine who was going through issues the other day. I went to greet him. I have to ask him about, you just left me. What happened? He said, ah, when you were fighting all the pastors, I knew what you were saying. Tell them. Facebook was there. I knew what you were saying was the truth. But I could not be seen associating with you. So the first thing you will lose when you start to tell the truth is friends, acquaintances, and followers. Listen, Abel Damina, you are my guy, and I will tell you this thing for one on one. They will try to rubbish this truth you are saying. You are not a perfect person, neither am I. But they can rubbish your person. Don't let them rubbish your truth. This is my advice to you, Abel Damina. Now about ordaining um, NNG, I read, I stumbled on a report that says he claimed that's Abel Damina. He claimed to have ordained Pastor Paul NNG, mentored him, and commissioned him into the ministry back in 1997. After which he advised NNG to start his church in Abuja against NNG and his wife's wish to go to United Kingdom to study masters in medicine. Chad Talina is my boy. He grew up under me with Paul Odola and all of them. And then I was given the illustration of how he wanted to go into ministry. Okay. But he decided to go to the UK for medical, um, I mean, for master's degree with his wife. Okay. But they didn't know anybody in London. Okay. Now, Becky's mother, the wife's mother was the treasurer of our church in Joss for years, her mother. Mm. In fact, we played a role in making the mother allow them get married because there was a little opposition. And I know I spoke to the mother personally, but that by the side. So I was given this illustration of how he came to me and he said, if I have people in the UK that can give him scholarship, him and his wife want to go and read masters mm. so that when they come back from the UK, they can start medical missions from okay. village to village and okay. all of that. So I told him, okay, they gave me the letters. I still have copies of the letters. Hmm. So I said, okay, I'll pray about it and I'll talk to you guys. I gave them my guest house they stayed, my guest room they stayed. I prayed that night and in the morning, the Spirit of God spoke to me that no, he shouldn't go to London. He should go and start ministry now. And I woke up in the morning and I called him and the wife and I told them and I prayed for them. And he said to me, but he doesn't know where to go. And I said, I hear Abuja in my mind. Pray about it. Hmm. And he said, okay, but I don't have anybody in Abuja. And I told him, when you get to Abuja, when you get to Joss, go to Abuja, arrive early in the morning. Just do evangelism on the streets. As you begin to preach, you will come across somebody who will receive the gospel and give you a place to stay. And exactly like I said, it happened. So I was giving that illustration and I mentioned all of that. Then after a few years, I began to hear that they were saying that I didn't ordain Paul Enche that Polynesia doesn't know me, that mm -hmm. I'm envious is because his church is bigger than mine. That's why I'm trying to identify with him by force. And all those talks began to come out. And then people started asking those questions again. And I said, I have nothing to benefit in saying I used to know Polynesia. I ordained him in February 1996 in Uyo Power City mm. on the 7th. Oh, wow. 7th February 1996. So he openly explained how he fathered Paul NNG. The proof that we have online currently that's trending now, we're also going to talk about witnesses, is that document that shows Damina as part of the trustees of NNG's church. NNG, uh, the wife, and Dr. Abel Damina. Now, Reacting to critics, because here, yeah, people criticize Damina for releasing that. He said he wished to put the record straight in public domain to buttress his claims of how far he went with NNG, uh, who he was supposed to be his father in the Lord. Now, 
If you ask me, can that be used as a proof that it truly gave him direction on how to start his now global ministry? Is it enough um, evidence to show that Dr. Damina ordained energy? Mm, I don't know, but it's not enough. You know, it's not enough reason. Yes, it's part of the trustees, but at some point, we meet people in our life that somehow make an impact, you know, in our life. It might not even be too long. Just a year or two, they will make, you know, an impact. But does that mean that they are the one who showed us the way? No, it might not necessarily be so, but they probably made an impact. You understand? So they gain our trust and we might or they were around at the time or close to the time you are about to start something big could be one of these things right because at this point we are not there we cannot say that oh yes this person is saying the other line i don't know but this person you would say this person is saying the truth this person is lying because of, if we are to talk about proof and witnesses right there is you know or there are two people the easiest person to learn anything from is one who has the proofs of what they are saying. You can't teach me church growth if you are not pastoring a church or if you don't have a church that is growing. You can't teach me financial principles if you are looking for transport money. Hallelujah. If you want to if you want me to hear about divine direction from you, tell me the directions you have received. And not just the directions you have received, the proofs of the direction. I am telling you directions with proofs. So Dr. Damina mentioned one Adam, right? That when he got to Abuja, when NNC got to Abuja, it was that Adamu that showed him this, that showed him that. And that same Adamu came out to say, that is false. And then he went to Abuja and started the church. And when the church was to move into Sheraton, because they had a guy called Adamu who received NNC, gave him a place to stay in Abuja. His name is Adamu. And this Adamu of a guy sponsored for them to move into Sheraton because the parlor they were using was no more enough. Mm. So when they moved into Sheraton and got the smallest room in Sheraton that takes 80 people, he called me to come and preach. My name is Right Honorable Adamu Entono. I want to discountenance the claims made by Abel Damina in his recent podcast that Dunamis Church started from my parlor in 1996. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Dunamis Church never started from my parlor in 1996. Dunamis Church actually started from Agora Hotel. We held two pre-inaugural meetings in Agora, after which we now moved to Cultural Center, where Dunamis was officially inaugurated. There is another person, um, Odola, right? That Damina said he ordained himself and NNG, even though Odola agreed. Uh, that Damina ordained him. He was ordained on the same day, 1996, 97, 98. 1996 Mondays. February. Yes, he was ordained on the same day with somebody Odola. Paul and Odola. Then, and then um, Eninche. Yes, him, Paul and, Odola, and Paul, and Paul Eninche so were ordained him, the same day right there. The same Eninche. Same service. So why will he now say he doesn't know you? Well, time will tell. Okay. Time Absolutely. Time will tell. I he said that he did not ordain NNG, that NNG was already an established man of God before he met Damina. So why would he say that he ordained an already established man of God? I, I don't need anything from Dr. Paul. God has already blessed me. But it's for the records. People are asking questions and I have to answer those questions. There are even people in church that were there when he was ordained. There are many people. You can't lie when there are many witnesses. Pastor Ada was there. Dr. Konko was there and a number of them. They were physically and they are in the building right now. They were there when they were the nation. There are even members of his church in Uyo here who were members of this church mm. who were there when he was ordained. 
I mean, the records are all over the place. I can go on and on. I have a lot of evidence, so I don't want to bring out pictures. I don't want to bring out stuff because I don't want to embarrass him. I just want to keep, you know, things within where we can all be happy, okay? So I don't need anything from him. And he said he encountered um, Pastor E. Adeboye in 1978, 1979. Wow, that's a long time ago. That's when he said the first encounter. And he also claimed that he rededicated his life in 1986 in Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. Not once did he mention, you know, um, Damina, but until 1995 in his story, because he shared that. And I watched the video, 1995, 1996, while I was sharing his story. You could feel the space, the blank space is, is trying to leave. So you know that it's just trying to omit Damina's name. For me, I think you should give credit, you know, or give respect to whom respect is due. It might not have ordained him, but he made an impact. And that's why he was part of the trustees. And about who he met when he got to Abuja. First of all, he said it was God that directed him to Abuja because i am too afraid to do what god is not involved too afraid i am too afraid to go on a journey that god is not involved in so i was at a junction three ways to go lord which is the way and i separated myself the last week of may to the mountains of ganarop three days fasting Beretatious tongue in. First day I heard nothing. Second day in the evening I was sitting on the rock outside and praying at the Capro School of Ministry in Ganarop. He said, What I spoke to you about, and this is like 10 years previously, the time to step into it has come. How Lord, where Lord? And specificity, not just Abuja, but where in Abuja? Where? Not Miss Road to Metama, not Miss Road to start in Wuse. The specific location. And while that was happening, my wife was at home. Lord, whatever you are telling me, telling him, tell me here. So that I can confirm that you directed him. When I returned back home, she opened her book and brought her note, word for word what I was receiving. And whenever I hear God, I jump out like a madman. No break. That was how I stepped out. And for God to confirm, the moment I landed in Abuja, at the area, Zone 5 Junction, I off my shoe, planted my feet on the ground. He said, wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread upon, I have given it unto you. And I stepped, cast, cast, with bare foot, crossed the road with my shoe in one hand and my bang in the other hand, like a madman, taking over territorial control. I ran into a young man who testified in the first service. Who met me? I was around five, five, five hundred level, six hundred level when he came from Otupo and met me. He came, he's trying to look for admission to the university. I gave him 25 naira of 30 something years ago. He used it to buy remedial form, entered the university and lived with me. There were five of them, we were five together in the room, all in my room. Fed freely, ate freely. He said in his testimony today, he said that room was on fire of prayer. 70% prayer, 30% academic work. If you are not praying, you have no business in that room. He was ruggedized, graduated as an architect, and then had been in Abuja, as I stepped across the road, who did I see? The person that I bought remedial form for university, who graduated, who is now an architect, who is standing, ran to me and said, Brother Paul. Hey! 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 Can 
can you see that re- divine calculated divine re- brother Paul said where are you going I said I'm going to Guagalada I had a, a friend in Guagalada who was a lecturer in school of nursing from my village not any man said it was God that directed him to Abuja so here I am thinking so do you, are you telling me that uh, Dr. Damina made this up? I'm trying to understand. A man of God lying? I don't want to believe so. Even NNJ himself, is he the one lying? I don't know. The Adamu that he said he met in Abuja came out to say that is false. That he was not the one, you know, that showed him the way in Abuja. Now, in Odola's words, I have been privileged to know Dr. Abel Damina in 1988 and Dr. Paul NNJ since 1994. And that was the first time Dr. Paul NNJ came into the picture. At the time, Dr. NNJ came into the picture. He was already a man of God in his own right. I have a particular hand be where Dr. Uh, Paul was featured as a guest speaker in 1995 in that handbill there was one pastor called dr friday yanga dr paul came into the picture already as a minister of the gospel fireful and vibrant he often attended conferences that damina organized then we had the opportunity of coming around dr joshua telena now this joshua telena was also fathered by uh, damina and he never debunk it. Many people are insulting Dr. Abel Damina. Small boy, he just came, he just did his thing. Listen, whatever Dr. Damina is preaching is a future, it's a gospel. In the next 10 years, we will preach it in Nigeria. But that man was the man I trained from. And two of us trained from another, the most dangerous preacher in the entire Africa. That man knows Bible. Before you talk about him, go and check your Bible. That man, we are trained by the same preachers. You may not like his ways. Me and him are not called to preach the same. He has been asking, just when I go and say, we continue, we will come on the way. But now, let's stay where God has anointed us. I will not look for the trouble I cannot carry. Somebody shout amen. Because that thing he's preaching comes with plenty of troubles. I wonder how he sleeps. Because they will not leave him alone. But the reason why that guy is talking the way he's talking, he has built capacity. He don't be well. Well. Well inside Bible. Until you build well, you can't challenge him. You are calling him small boy. So what will you be calling us? Call him small. What will you be calling us? Most of the big men of God you see today before came through him. Let's let's say what before people gather and drown his voice. Let me help. And it was very clear that Dr. Paul was different. He was different from us in so many ways. He was different in his lifestyle, his approach to ministry, and his morality. At one of the conferences we had in Uyo in 1996, Dr. Paul also attended. It was obvious that Dr. Paul had his own approach, his own lifestyle and ministry. He only came around as an associate. We always knew he had a ministry that was going to be global because of his approach to life and ministry, which was quite different from ours. His very strict and high standard of living was different from ours because we were all young men then. The way he is today, I'm not surprised. If Dr. Abel Damina claims to have trained or ordained Dr. Paul NNJ into ministry, it is false. Uh, NNJ also shared more about his journey. He emphasized that he was deep rooted in this ministry thing before 1996. That was what he said. And he never debunked the, you know, the story that Damina was in the ministry before him. He, yeah, he said that Damina started before him, but he never ordained him. A Adeboy came to Tuko in government secondary school. He had come in 1978 and also came in 1979 to Otubo. Held a crusade. In that meeting in government secondary school, before he could open the scripture to, to start preaching, the Holy Ghost fell everywhere. And people were, I mean, it was an explosion. I was in that meeting. And that meeting was a drastic turning point. As a matter of fact, I um, went to one of the young men that came with him. And I, and I had some discussions with him. And he encouraged and was talking to me about how to remain focused, how to remain on fire, how to study the word. That was 
1978. Between 1978, 79, 80, we had gone with Brother Victor to villages on evangelism. We are talking about age 11, thereabout. We have gone to villages for evangelism. Are you following what I'm saying here? So you can, I want us to understand a journey. And done all of that. And then, young men, brother Joe Ogbe, Joe Jesmel, um, young disciples ministry in Lagos, he was, he was also a product of that meeting. He was in the three-day fast in Wesley High School. That continued the journey. My encounter with Pastor E. A. Adeboye was 45 years ago. Four five. After a season of some slight slackness spiritually, in the year of 1986, I rededicated my life to Christ in Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. I had an encounter overnight and Deeper Life Campus Fellowship and Kumu is 38 years. I had an encounter overnight. It lasted from about 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. I won't go into detail because I, I see time is racing. The outcome of that encounter was my life completely handed over to God and Lord, I am ready to do whatever you want. I went to the Campus Fellowship. Nobody was there. I cleaned out the chairs. Nobody told me. And then came and stood at the door and began to welcome people to the fellowship. I'm sure they were wondering, well, where did this new usher come from? What branch? I was from no branch. The zeal of God had consumed me. It was a driving force. I, I cleaned out the chair. Welcome to the people. In Deeper Life Campus Fellowship, we went all the way to Ayobo IBTC in Lagos for Deeper Life Campus Fellowship conferences. It was a forming moment. After a while, I, 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 after doing that emergency ushering work, and then all of that, I joined the Deeper Life Choir. Deeper Life Choir director is now a pastor, and um, he, he's in Benetton. We met Brother Moro last time, and my pastor in Deeper Life then, Pastor Chris Obaji Makodi, was here for the, com for the dedication of the Glory Dome. Hallelujah. Now, that journey went, until I stepped into the campus. Now, the, 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 the first campus was an A-level. And now this was the full-fledged finish going for the university medicine. And as I stepped into the campus. Now, let me, let me say something before stepping into the campus. Because I want this journey to be understood by you. Because there are lessons to learn. After that A-level, I didn't get immediate admission. I, I had points that, I mean, I had more than cut-off point for medicine. So I had one year at home. That one year could be called my Bible school. Within that one year, there were days of seven hours in tongues. Average. Within that one year, seven days, no food, only water. And we think that season seven hours of tonguing. We had a fellowship called the Ojira Fellowship where iron sharpened iron. This bishop in my church here today, tonight. He was in that fellowship. Bishop, you are sitting all the way there. Please come forward and let's create a seat. Where somebody shared, another shared, it was like bomb dropping. Young men on fire, on fire, on fire. By the time I stepped, in, I like you to listen to this. By the time I stepped into the university, I arrived like a flame. I was studying medicine, but every morning before class start, started by 8 a.m., I will pray between one hour to three hours. Before, let me say something again. In that 1986, 
86, 87. We had already, we are already casting out devils. Already. So I entered into the university aflame. I am ashamed as a Christian, but this is not the reason why I'm a Christian. If not, I have not become traditionalist. But, you know, I, I have my own mind and I believe without asking for anybody's help, I can freely talk to God as a Christian. And that's why things like this don't move me. You understand? But it is sad to see people like that that we look up to fight in public and disagree. That's just my point. That's the whole point of making this video. Really. I didn't plan to make a video today. Yeah. I just thought about it. Yeah. I need to just, you know, share this, share my thoughts. And that's it. Yeah. Okay, guys. That's why I'm going to hold it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, sub subscribe. Until we see you next time. Peace.